Hi, I'm Jacob Sivulski. Welcome to R. To R, Data Analytics and Data Visualization. Hello, welcome back to R Introduction. In the last lesson, I showed you how to use Google Maps with R. In this lesson, I'm going to extend this concept, but also show you how you could use the nearest neighbor algorithm to facilitate matching of data so that it could be displayed in Google Maps. Okay, um, we are currently in the working directory, which you see on the right, and is the script which I'm going to explain. The data set to be used is obtained from the Australian Department of Health and Human Services and you could fetch it from this URL. I'm going to very quickly repeat um, what's been done in the last lesson. I'm going to activate two packages, uh, ggmap for Google Maps and class for KNN. Read the data about local government areas and read the geolocations of those areas patch three variables, the names of those local government areas, information about people health, plus the number of smokers per 1000, identify statistical uh, properties of the sample of smokers, and use this to identify the classification of each of the local government areas. Putting it all together, we get the following data frame, which gathers this all together. We have local government areas, latitude, longitude, information about the wellness, smokers, and the smoking habits of people living in those local government areas. Plotting it with Google Maps is very simple. We can fetch the map from Google Maps, and then, and then print or plot all the data points in different colors, sizes, and shapes. And this is what we got the last time. Now the question is, considering that local government areas are well-known data points uh, on this map, if we were to add some previously never considered, never seen data points, locations on this map. What would be the likely uh, smoking habits of people living in those towns and cities? That's one of the questions. The second question is, what is the closest local government area that people would be likely to go to the council? So we have two big questions and for that we're going to use KNN, the nearest neighbor model. We will be relying on geographical locations and the measurement of distance between data points in a very physical way using latitude and longitude. However, you could use other attributes of those geolocations such as uh, income, such as um, uh, crime rates, such as medical support. All this information could be used as part of measuring of distances between individual data points in this space, not even necessarily on the map. Okay, so I'm going to construct a collection of data points. Here it is, about eight of them. Uh, well-known location Victoria, uh, like the, the best pie restaurant in Melbourne, and uh, the latitude and longitude. Of course, they are located somewhere in between all the other data points. Now I'm going to use KNN. Let's look at the help for KNN. It's the nearest neighbor classification. It it is important, it's a classification algorithm, which takes a training set. In our case, it's a collection 
of local government area locations in terms of the um, latitude and longitude. The classification of those um, data points in the training set, in our case, smoking habits. A test set, which are locations of the new data points. K, which determines how many neighbors the closest data points for each of those in a test set we will be considering to provide information about the likely classification and other information. Okay, so we need to create the locations in a training set, the classification of each point in a training set, and another possible classification will be running KNN twice. Once to classify each of the um, data points in terms of the smoking habit. The second time we will use the names of those local government areas as a unique classification. It's almost not a classification because each one of those um, local government areas has a unique name. So basically we'll use it as a retrieval mechanism. The new locations which already you've seen in the little table of eight uh, data points. Now KNN is going to do the magic. We pass the training set the locations of well-known local government areas, the classification of each of those points, the location of unknown, previously not seen um, locations on the map, and how many data points should be considered for determining the resulting classification for those test sets. Let's run it. It's very quick. It's a very quick algorithm. And this is what we get. Basically, it's a collection of um, classes. It's eight of them for each of the data points. We'll do the same thing using the second call to KNN. This time, the training set is, is sorry, the training set is exactly the same. The test set is the same but the classification are simply names. Since each of the names is unique, it makes no sense to consult more than one neighbor to get the correct answer. And this will be the result. And again, eight government, uh, local government names, which are supposed to be close locations. I'm going to put it all together and display it for you. It takes a lot of space, so let me just shrink it. Let's have a look. What you see on the left up to here are eight locations and classified. And the classification comes from the KNN algorithm. On the right is the best matching local government area and its location and its classification. You can see that we have a perfect match, nearly, with the exception of one, the very first pi in the sky. The local, the closest local government area um, identifies that it's heavy smoking area, whereas pi in the sky, as predicted using KNN algorithm, was light. Let's see on the map why it happened. We're going to plot this information. So we create a map, zoom level 7, and now we will plot as follows. It's a more complicated plot. Um, the object returned from QMAP, um, it knows how to print or plot itself. And if you pass additional information, it will be utilized in this process. So let's run it. It will include the title. Uh, it will include the lines connecting um, the closest local government area for each point 
to the point itself using latitude and longitude of this pair. It'll be done in purple. Um, we'll plot all known local government areas in the color of the smoking habit prevalent in this area. We're going to plot all unknown points in the color of the learned habit. Now, since we don't know the size, previously the size of LGA was the wellness of people, here we'll just use some default size. 150. What we're going to do, we're going to also plot a little purple dot in the middle of any of those new locations so that we could easily identify it on a map. Um, identify the colors for different smoking habits and provide the scaling information. Okay, this is the information. Let's make it slightly larger and let's see what can be deducted from here. I can see all the dots with a purple dot, those are the new areas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The big mess in here that ideally we should enlarge it if possible. Um, when we use the K and N, we use K equals 3. Um, uh, now we can see that there's no issues in this area. All those points found this to be the closest area. Um, for this one, it's interesting that it used perhaps those three or those three. So yellow was used all these, this triangle probably defined the color and the color is indicating the smoking habits of the people. So the only issue is somewhere here and um, to see what happened there, let's run it and make it slightly larger. Run it again and this time we'll zoom it to 8 Perhaps it'll be enough. No, let's go to the next level, zoom 9. I'm just stepping through this very quickly hoping that we'll get enough details. Okay, let's make it larger and see what happened here. Uh, the only discrepancy is here. The closest local government area is that red dot, the uh, heavy smoking area, whereas the new point was determined to be light smoking habits. And the reason for that is that we have one, two, three, or one, two, possibly three data points, each of different color, uh, which means that any of them is a good candidate for the classification of this data point. And so the blue one was selected, possibly quite randomly. Um, that's basically how it all works. As you can see, um, we tried to combine K and N. We used it for two different purposes. One is to assist the classification of unknown data points. Here we utilized the physical distance of those points on the map, but we could use any other attributes of this data. Um, we showed how to plot it, how to plot circles, how to color them. In the previous lesson we also showed how to use different symbols that you could place on the map. Uh, you could draw lines, polygons and other shapes on the maps to visualize the information. So that gets us to the end of this lesson. Thank you very much. 
and uh, I'll see you in the next module. Uh, we finished the introduction to R and we move to the next stage, the modeling. Thank you. Thank you.